Hello, my name is Professor Alex Ford and I'm a consultant gastroenterologist in Leeds, UK. I'm delighted to have been invited once again to provide a video abstract on our latest paper in gut, Helicobacter pylori eradication therapy to prevent gastric cancer, systematic review and meta-analysis. Despite a declining incidence in the developing world, gastric cancer is the third commonest cause of cancer death worldwide. It's estimated that one in 33 men and one in 78 women will develop the disease during their lifetime. Global mortality from gastric cancer is likely to further increase due to improving life expectancy in developing countries and recent observations of an increased risk in younger generations. Helicobacter pylori colonizes the stomach of approximately 50% of the world's population. Infection with the bacterium causes chronic gastritis. In a minority of susceptible individuals, this can lead to a stepwise progression through gastric atrophy, intestinal metaplasia and dysplasia to the development of carcinoma. As a result, H. pylori is classified as a human carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. A meta-analysis of nested case control studies confirmed that H. pylori positive individuals were almost three times more likely to develop gastric cancer compared with uninfected controls in the general population. A previous Cochrane Collaboration Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomised Controlled Trials of Eradication Therapy compared with placebo or no treatment in healthy H. pylori positive adults demonstrated a 34% reduction in relative risk of an incident gastric cancer and a number needed to treat of 124. However, there was no effect on mortality from gastric cancer. The impact may be more dramatic in higher risk groups such as those with gastric neoplasia, including dysplasia or early gastric cancer. Given that it is six years since the publication of this meta-analysis, the possibility that there may now be more published trials, as well as longer duration of follow-up in the existing trials, led us to re-examine this issue. We updated our previous meta-analysis searching the medical literature to identify potential studies. Eligible trials examine the effect of at least seven days of eradication therapy on subsequent occurrence of gastric cancer in H. pylori positive healthy adults or H. pylori positive adults with gastric neoplasia, including dysplasia or early gastric cancer, undergoing endoscopic mucosal resection. A minimum follow-up duration of two years was required. We extracted all endpoints at the last point of follow-up that they were reported using the most contemporaneous publication from each trial. Ten articles reporting data from seven separate trials compared eradication therapy with placebo or no treatment in 8,323 healthy individuals and provided data on subsequent occurrence of gastric cancer. Another three trials compared eradication therapy with placebo or no treatment in 1,841 patients with gastric neoplasia undergoing endoscopic mucosal resection. Four trials were at low risk of bias. When we pooled data from the seven trials at the last point of follow-up, there were 68 gastric cancers among 4,206 healthy infected subjects receiving eradication therapy compared with 125 in 4,117 allocated to placebo or no treatment. The relative risk of subsequent occurrence of gastric cancer with eradication therapy versus placebo or no treatment was 0.54, with no heterogeneity between studies. The number needed to treat was 72. We modelled these data to estimate the impact of population screening and treatment of H. pylori on disability-adjusted life years gained. We estimated that this programme would result in a gain of over 8.8 .8 million disability adjusted life years globally. 5.65 million disability adjusted life years were gained in men and 3.2 million in women. The impact was highest in East Asia and lowest in Australasia. There were four studies containing 6,301 subjects which provided data on mortality from gastric cancer. Follow-up in these trials ranged from 5 years to 22.3 years. Overall, there were 36 deaths from gastric cancer among 3,154 healthy infected individuals randomised to eradication therapy, compared with 59 deaths in 3,147 participants allocated to placebo. The relative risk of death from gastric cancer with eradication therapy compared with placebo was 0.61, the number needed to treat was 135. However, there was no effect of eradication therapy on all-cause mortality. 
When we pooled data from the three trials conducted in patients with gastric neoplasia, there were 41 future gastric cancers occurring in 910 patients randomised to eradication therapy, compared with 87 in 931 patients receiving placebo or no treatment. The relative risk of a future gastric cancer with eradication therapy versus placebo or no treatment was 0.49 with no heterogeneity between studies. The number needed to treat was 21. Mortality data were reported incompletely by these trials. To summarise, mass eradication of H. pylori reduced future incidence of gastric cancer. The number needed to treat to prevent one gastric cancer decreased from 124 overall in our previous meta-analysis to 72. In addition, eradication therapy was associated with a significant reduction in gastric cancer-related mortality in healthy individuals. The number needed to treat to prevent one gastric cancer-related death was 135. There was no effect on all-cause mortality. The effect was even stronger in individuals with gastric neoplasia. The number needed to treat with eradication therapy to prevent one future gastric cancer was only 21. This meta-analysis provides contemporaneous estimates of the impact of eradication of H. pylori on both incidence of and mortality from gastric cancer, which can be used to inform future public health decisions.